Welcome back, hyenas. Today we're talking about Lunchly, the child-focused lunchable substitute product that has been launched forward by three of the worst YouTubers you have ever heard of. A product that has been met with such backlash that conversations between its three founders and the rest of the internet has been headline news for the better part of several weeks at this point. How come people are still talking about it? I mean, what's so wrong about a product that calls itself a variation of food? At the end of the day, League of Legends is a variation of therapy, right? How is it that the internet has spent several weeks discussing the ins and outs of what is essentially a children's school lunch product? I took a close look at the nutritional label on the back of the packaging, and I think I've come to the conclusion that the secret ingredient is beef. That's a lot of nuts! You know what? Forget gamer subs. Buying highly detailed new waifu cups using my discount code in the description? That's dumb. I can launch my own product. How about brand new Sumeto cups? Check it out. It doesn't have a bottom, so it's objectively worse than existing stuff on the market, but more electrolytes and a better flavor in the queso. I bet you're sold already, right? I'm gonna be honest, guys. I've been using the new Sumeto cup for the better part of the last week, and boy, am I thirsty. This, this just doesn't work. It's a bad product. The stuff on the shelves is already better. I, I was just trying to sell it because it makes me more money. You know what I mean? And I mean, you know, I'm willing to admit that. It turns out the backlash from the Sumeto cup wasn't that bad, probably because we had zero sales. I cannot imagine how bad the situation would have been if I launched a bad product and millions of people were the target audience. That wouldn't be great. I already did an entire video talking about the launch of Lunchly and all of the backlash that these three founders faced online upon trying to announce that their product was healthier, better, or anything other than just an inclusion of their already existing products in order to be more of a cash grab than any other endeavor might have been. The key takeaway from that video, if you didn't watch it, is that while the product itself isn't probably going to poison anybody, the unbelievably bad responses that every one of these individuals has had to any level of criticism that people have made online has been completely ridiculous. And somehow, several weeks later, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the worst examples of continued responses from these founders seemingly unable to accept that their product isn't the messiah of lunch products that they claim it to be. The first tidbit is Logan Paul versus the community notes on Twitter. If you guys don't know how community notes works, basically people can come together to correct or provide additional information for tweets that may otherwise be misleading or lacking in information. And it's a way for people to be able to point out clickbait or show if somebody's lying. People can come together and add some sort of edit that gets posted under tweets. And because of the tremendous amount of misinformation and or viral marketing that aims to just be spectacular and not actually be accurate, most of the tweets around Lunchly, whether they be from Logan Paul or Mr. Beast, have been met with a community note in one way or another, and for some reason, Logan Paul keeps arguing with them. I could go through about a dozen tweets of Logan Paul arguing with other people claiming that the electrolytes in his prime beverage comes from potassium versus sodium, but none of this, I don't care about any of this really. What I think is super funny is the fact in every one of these tweets, Logan Paul has his comment set to his followers only which means nobody can reply to the stuff that he's shouting out to 7 million subscribers on Twitter, and yet still people have found a way to be able to correct him on his BS. It's like he's screaming into a room with a straitjacket on, and there's nothing but one small window, and he's in there by himself, and somebody keeps taping a note to the window that says, you suck, but he can't reach it because it's on the other side of the window. So sad. This situation gets dramatically funnier with the introduction of one YouTuber by the name of Tommy Innit. Tommy Innit would post a screen grab from Logan Paul's most recent podcast appearance with a chapter by the title of Gaza Conflict. Seemingly at some point on this podcast they were talking about the Gaza Conflict, but as you can see from the timeline and what's shown on the screen, during this chapter they took the time to promote their prime hydration beverage, seemingly adding on to the dog pile of Logan Paul being somebody who will take any and all opportunity to make more money. Logan Paul seemingly with nothing better 
better to do, of course responded to this criticism by posting a screen grab of some text messages that Tommy Innit had sent him over a year ago, congratulating him on his boxing endeavors. Logan Paul would continue to post more private messages between him and Tommy, seemingly try to paint him as some sort of fanboy, and stating, oh, Tommy is lashing out because I've been neglecting him, sorry I didn't chill with you, buddy, to which Tommy Innit replied, why do you keep posting private messages of me being kind to you? Are you stupid? A genuine question that I feel like Logan Paul should honestly ask himself several times a day. Are you stupid? I'm so thirsty. Tommy Innit would then tweet, if in the same week I had a daughter, I also lost to a beef with Tommy Innit, I would kill myself. Which is one of the funniest things he could have responded. I would say the only thing would be better is if he made his own parody promotion of some sort of fake product to rival this new Lunchly launch by Logan Paul. Funny update. Vapely. Vapely is an all new way to make fans feel good. This is my product. I am so proud of it. So proud. And go. This is my product. I am so proud of you for buying it. Vaping is good. This is my product. <sighs> Masterful shit post. Responding with your own leaked call logs to show that Logan Paul messaged you to try to handle this like men offline and then dropping this parody promotion, making a song to highlight the shilling that these guys are engaging in simply for views and money. The link to purchase the Vapely product in the description of his video leads to Rick Astley's never gonna give you up. I don't think this guy can miss. If there's one thing you should take away from all of this drama, a learning experience, as it were, is that if you are a YouTuber who is looking to launch some sort of product, the last thing you should do is engage with any tweets from a Minecraft YouTuber. It will be the death of your product's launch, I promise you. Somehow, not even exemplified as much by Tommy in it as it has been with KSI responding to that one same tweet by Dan TDM two weeks ago. This guy has been taking L's from a dude who hasn't even said anything else. This tweet, now a hallmark tweet in this entire endeavor, was something that everybody, as far as the founders of Lunchly were concerned, would respond to in an effort to try to state their own criticism, trying to claim, actually none of them have actually tried to claim that this isn't just a product designed to make money. They're just claiming that, yeah, it is, so buy it. KSI would notoriously fumble the bag several times when trying to own Dan TDM. His first attempt was by stating that his YouTube's figures look like shit, despite the fact that KSI also has these exact same figures made by the exact same company. His second attempt would be to try to silence critics who were saying, hey, saying somebody has a YouTube's figure isn't the same as you marketing food, to which he would respond that Dan DDM does have a collaboration with the food company, except it was once and like eight years ago and on his second channel and is nowhere near in the scope of what they're doing with Lunchly. Also, and I feel like we gloss over this a lot, Dan TDM hasn't been responding to people and criticism in massive Twitter tirades for two weeks straight. He would then proceed to try to utilize the attention with the beef that he had garnered and started himself primarily to promote his new music video and song, Thick of It. This whole Dan TDM and Lunchly beef really shows that I'm in the thick of it out October 4th, I hope you get hit by a bus. KSI would then also retweet Marquez Brownlee's announcement of his panels app, basically stating the entire tweet that Dan TDM had said about his product, which to be fair, if any of his tweets were to have any level of credibility or even coherence, this would be the primary example. KSI would then tweet out a link to myapology.co.uk, which seemed like him responding to all the drama that again he had started himself, but instead just linked you to a link for his new song. Keep in mind, Dan TDM has said nothing further at this point. KSI would then proceed to get into his own little arguments with the community notes that were pointing out that the link was clickbait, there is no apology, and this is just a vaguely thinly veiled promotion for his new song. KSI would then retweet 
a news article stating that Kai Sinat seemed to be in links with McDonald's to make his own promotional meal, to which he would state, hey, Dan TDM, where are you at? Seemingly trying to draw him to speak on more criticism for any YouTuber doing any sort of collaboration or product going forward, as if it's to be met with the same criticism that Lunchly has been. And I will remind you again, Dan TDM has not responded. Almost two full weeks later, and KSI is tweeting Dan TDM directly and publicly saying, Why don't you come over to the sidecast? Let's talk this out like men. He did not respond. No reply publicly or privately. It's obvious you just tweeted for likes, interactions, and to be seen as a white knight. And before your stupid minions reply or meme me, you started this. I'm just trying to finish it. To which he did not reply. <laughs> These stupid fans leave trash comments on my new song and think they're getting to me. You're not. It's not funny. It's boring. You're wasting your time. It feels like it's starting to get to you, bro. Daxerto would tweet out stating that there are hate comments on KSI's newest music video that have more likes than the music video itself. Imagine spending so much time and effort into making a song for people to then repeatedly take the piss out of it online. I get it's trendy to hate me right now, but can we like move on? You're the, you're the only dude talking about this still. Dan TDM would tweet out a picture of him with his kids, captioned, living the dream. And you're damn right, Dan. You, you have a beautiful family, and I wish nothing but the best for you. Hopefully, KSI just moves up. He retweeted it. He retweeted the Dan TDM tweet that has nothing to do with him. He said, proud of you, bro, as if this has anything to do with him. Sumeto, surely Dan TDM has said something back to him at this. Nope. Not once, not a single thing, no comment, no liking, hating, twi nada. You can say that the Lunchly product was doomed to fail after the tremendous amount of criticism that started to happen with the conversations around it online. Obviously, everybody responding to it didn't help because of how poorly they handled it, but the negative feedback to KSI's newest song and the fact that it seems like he's taking it pretty poorly and that he doesn't appreciate the hate that he's getting on something he feels like he worked hard on is a direct result of your goofy ass trying to tie the fact that you had a new song to the beef that was unrelated to it that you were having online. Not all publicity is good publicity, specifically on YouTube, where if the only reason people are watching you is because they want to make fun of you, guess what's going to happen when you have a major product reveal or a new song that drops? People are going to hate you for it. On the bright side, Opera GX has a brand new plugin that you can install that will automatically mute your audio if you accidentally play KSI's new song. That's pretty much everything funny about this topic that I could find so far. But if you want updates and more videos like this, remember to subscribe so you see me in your inbox more often. A big thank you to the patrons for being able to fund the new Halloween costume budget. And I will catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace.